Ever wanted to add a dynamic growth effect to your Blender projects? Stick around, because today we'll show you how to create this amazing effect and make easy adjustments and changes to it on the fly. Ready to dive in? Let's go. First, we need three things. The mesh you want to grow will use a simple cube, a mesh to control the growth, a sphere, and the surface you want the items to grow on, another cube. For now, we will just place these in random places to get things started. Make sure your growing mesh is in a collection. OK, now we have those all set up. Let's select the mesh where things will grow. Go to Geometry Nodes and hit New. Name it Growth Sim, or anything you want. First node we need to add is Distribute Points on Faces, then connect that to the group input. Pull out from Points and get Instance on Points. Then pull out from Instances and get Join Geometry, connecting it to the output. And then get the Geometry input and put that into the Join Geometry. Pull out from Rotation on Distribute Points on Faces and add Rotate Euler. Then pull out of Rotate By and get a random value node. Then set max Z to 5 for randomness on the Z rotation of your growing mesh. Connect your rotation Euler to the rotation input on instance on points. Now get a position node. Then also get yourself an object info node. This is where your controller will go to control the growing sim. Pull out of your position node and get a geometry proximity node, the sample position 1. Connect geometry from your object info node and connect that to the geometry on your proximity node. Get the eyedropper and link your sphere to the object info. Now on your proximity node, pull out of distance and get yourself a map range node and connect that to the scale of your instance on points node. To control the distance your growing sim effects, you change the from min to a higher number, we done 2.8, and you're from max to a lower number. This ensure the growing effect appears. Next, let's get ourselves a collection info node and connect to to instance on your instance on points node, then enable separate children and reset children. Then add in our collection, you will see the cube then starts to appear all over the cube. To change this, we need to go down to Object Info and select Relative rather than Object. You will then see the instance cubes appear better. You can then grab your controller, move it around, and watch your collection cubes appear all over your base mesh. To then adjust the placement of your instances, you can go into your geometry note setup and make change to the map range. Adjusting these parameters will give you a better idea of how it all works. You can also go over to your random value, connect it to the rotation, and play with that for more randomness of rotation. We can also adjust another key parameter, which is the density. But let's say we want easier control straight from the Modifiers tab. All you do is grab an input node and drag it into the group input. You will then see these appear over on the right in your Modifiers tab. You can add all the essential parameters you want easy access to. You can also change the names of these parameters by pressing N in the Geometry Nodes area, selecting your parameters and giving it a new name, which will change here. You can really play with as much of these parameters as you like to get your desired look. You can also change the growing mesh that's in your collection folder. Just make any changes you want to it, and you'll see it update it right away as you go. Now let's test this out on another object. We can delete everything here, as we already have our geometry nodes set up to be reused. We will go into Blender Kit and grab ourselves some free models. First, we will grab a sofa, drag that in, and position it how we want. You will then need something to grow on the sofa. Let's get ourselves a potato. Drag that in, and then next we need a controller. We will use a plane for this one. Pull it off to the side and adjust it however you want. As we want the GrowSim to work on the whole object, we need to merge this one together. Let's select all the items. Right click, go to Convert to Mesh to apply all modifiers it may have. Then press Command plus J to join them. Now to use our new setup, all we do is select our sofa, go to Modifiers, get a Geometry Note modifier, click this icon here, and select our growth sim. Then we change collection to the potato collection and select the new controller object. Then we can start playing with our parameters like density and size to get the desired look. If it looks a little strange, we can always go back into the geometry node setup and start playing with the map range node. By playing with these parameters, you will start to get something that works better for you. You can also add these into your group input to make modifying easier within the modifiers tab. And if you was to render this out, just always make sure you have your controller hidden from render view. Talking about rendering, we can use our new add-in, which is available in our description. Our new render add-on is a one-click solution to getting better and faster renders. Here, I select Optimize Cycles and add in one-click studio lights, hit Render, and I get a stunning Cycles render in 13 seconds. We hope this tutorial helps you create amazing effects. If you have any questions or want to see more, leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome Blender tutorials. See you in the next one.